Welcome to the panel presented by Sportcheck in St. Louis. Tony Barr here alongside Jack Michaels and Bob Stauffer. The Oilers are coming off a perfect homestand that saw them go 3-0, including two divisional victories in the latter half of that homestand. They look to carry that momentum into Dallas last night. Jack, they were hit with a pretty big curveball moments before game time. Absolutely, and speaking of curveballs, we got Bush Stadium right behind us, and trust me, it'd be a little bit better if we were here on a sunny July day <laughs> rather than flurries. But uh, back to the game and the task at hand for the Edmonton Oilers in Dallas, obviously a tough assignment without the services of Connor McDavid. Even with the services of Connor McDavid, Dallas has been a good home team this year, and lately, after the Oilers started the year with a five-game winning streak on the road, they dropped their first two, then won their next five, They've been going in the other direction on the road, and they've got to figure it out. They're going to be playing a beat-up St. Louis team, much as Dallas was last night on the back end. And certainly from an Edmonton standpoint, they hope to have Connor McDavid back in the lineup because it was plain to see in Dallas, as it would be whenever you're missing the best player in the world, that the Oilers attack simply not the same because I thought they played fairly well with nothing to show for it. Well, this team right now is a bottom seven team in the league in terms of goals per game with Connor McDavid. So uh, envision, if you may, what it's going to look like without him. And, uh, you know, I think that a couple things occurred against Dallas. The team played pretty good for the first 40 minutes. Uh, we already know what's going to happen at practice. I mean, Ken Hitchcock's going to grind them. They're going to be they're going to be working on checking and uh, checking nonstop, checking for a 60 minute game. Uh, they, they were too loose at times, and uh, I mean, granted, two goals were scored basically off broken plays. But uh, this is a work in progress with Ken Hitchcock. This is only his third full uh, practice day today, and I, I I see Ken in time graduating almost like Jack, like an offensive coordinator, building more uh, to the game plan as the season goes on. But it starts in the back end for the Oilers, and I'm talking team defense. I'm not uh, specifically highlighting the defense itself. So, you know it. The end result in Dallas, I mean, Dallas is a team that's well coached, that's experienced, that's pretty much the same team that Hitch had last year, uh, and they know how to play a hard, firm, competitive game, and the owners are trying to get there with their group, and unfortunately in Dallas, they had some challenges. And again, I have a different take on this because to me, and you know, whether or not he is, you know, drills today concern checking, for me, the Oilers are checking just fine. For me, the last six games, 10 goals. Now, they're 3-2-1 in one of those games, and I think normally when you'd score 10 goals over a six-game span, the best you could hope for is two victories. I thought the Oilers checked well enough against Dallas. For me, there just wasn't enough sustained attack, second and third chances, and quite frankly, grade-A chances even off the rush. They just didn't have much going. And again, that's directly attributable to not having Connor McDavid. I know Connor McDavid played for a month last year while he was, you know, riddled with flu-like symptoms. He was able to battle through it, somehow stay on the ice and still be productive. I know from having gone through that experience that he'll do everything he can to be on the ice yeah. Wednesday night. They didn't put Lewis. the puck, they didn't put the puck in the and when I'm talking checking, I mean it's it's an overall game plan. There were times that they didn't put the puck in the right spots and that put them in a position where they were, you know, they, I mean, let's face it. I mean, Dallas had the higher uh, caliber scoring opportunities throughout the course of the game. They hit a couple posts. Uh, and again, I, I still think with Ken, we will see more offense in time. It's just not going to happen overnight. First, you take care of the team defense, then you build a transition out and then the team's got to do a little bit better. And unfortunately for Edmonton against Dallas, it was some of their veteran players that weren't great at protecting the puck as that game wore on. Ken Hitchcock did mention that he was genuinely pleased with the effort last night. A couple of stretches in the second period that got to him. But the head coach also mentioned something interesting in the morning skate. He said Koskinen will go tonight, that being Monday night, and Talbot will be the guy on Wednesday night in St. Louis. If you're number 33, how much pressure is on your shoulders and if you if you're a player in front of him how much pressure do you put on yourself to play well in front of number 33 well i think his teammates have camp talbot's back i think whenever you're an nhl goalie especially with a team that's struggling to score goals there's always pressure i mean let's be honest I mean, you're the goalie it, you know starting when you're you know at a mage there's always pressure on the goalie but for cam talbot this is a real opportunity 
with some of St. Louis's major players out of the lineup. I mean, you know, you got a guy like Alex Petrangelo on the back end, Alexander Steen and Jaden Schwartz up front. You've got to take advantage of that situation. And Talbot did not do it the last time he was entrusted with a start on the road against a struggling team, and that was Los Angeles. He's going to get another chance against St. Louis. I know his teammates are going to play hard in front of him, but I also think Cam Talbot understands it's time to end his personal losing streak, get this team home with a split, and then hopefully have some of their players who are riddled with illness right now you know, back to full strength. I think Ryan Spooner's absence against Dallas was a key factor, Bob, and I think you'd agree because of what Spooner brings to the table speed-wise. Well, just depth-wise, right? I mean, you could argue they miss Tobias Rader as well, and we'd like to see uh, Valentin uh, Zikov as well. I mean, they're just, they were light at forward. Dallas has got a lot of depth at forward. The orders didn't get to Dallas's D, weren't effective off the cycle to grind against that uh, younger uh, defense. Uh, well, I, you know, and some of the American Hockey League defense they had in there. Pertaining to uh, Cam Talbot, this is his opportunity. And Jack's right, St. Louis, you don't, I mean, the driver for that team up front is Jaden Schwartz. And then on the back end, Petrangelo's uh, Hockey Canada automatic every time they play. So one big difference uh, in terms of, uh, you know, we didn't know what to expect against Los Angeles for Cam Talbot with Cal Peterson. I certainly didn't expect Cal Peterson to give the quality of start. With St. Louis, they got some goaltending identity issues as well. Like, they, they, they're looking for a goaltender. Word is they've been trying to, you know, potentially look at trading for a goaltender. So, uh, you know, this game's going to be up in the air. Both teams looking for a goaltender to give them a good start. We'll get an update on Connor McDavid and Ryan Spinner, who had the game winner on Saturday, arguably his best game as an Oiler on the weekend. We'll see if he draws into the lineup, but we know who will be in the lineup. Jack and Bob Stoffer, they'll have your call on 630 Jet. We'll have you covered right here on Oilers TV. This has been the panel presented by Sportcheck in St. Louis. Nice gloves, rookie.